Hey there, welcome to talk about question and answers. And if you want to send your question in, remember to send it to seedofchoice at gmail.com. That way I'll be more likely to answer it in this segment. Um, our question today comes from Sarah Eberts. And it's a rather long, complex question, so I'm going to read it and answer it as I read. She writes, Hello Saloy, I have only recently found your YouTube channel and I have enjoyed binge watching your videos. I am a novice gardener in my second year and expanding my garden this year. It's great to hear from new gardeners. It's awesome to know that um, the information that I'm sharing is having an impact, a direct impact in growing new gardeners. So thank you for watching and thank you for sending your question also. I can't help but notice uh, I find that I'm having a bit of trouble with my seedlings since I'm taking on more of them. I can't help but notice that your seedlings look strong and healthy when you go to plant them and mine are not looking very strong at this point. Certainly having strong seedlings I think is one of the, one of the important points to make sure you, you do especially when you're beginning because that's going to ensure garden success. So yes many people will go and buy seedlings to begin with and I think that's a great strategy if you if it's the first year the second year it's a good idea to to buy um, store-bought seedlings but there are some reasons why I would advise against it sure it's easier and it's um, it will ensure that you have something on the ground now the reasons against it would be it's more expensive and that's not within everyone's budget and also it limits your variety and the other more grim reason is that many times you buy seedlings from from nurseries and they can come already infected so you're wasting your money and you might be bringing in diseases into your garden so I am always of the the opinion that yes you do whatever you can to to be able to garden and learn but if you can garden from seed then you're not just a a garden mechanic that just transplants from here to there. You're actually cultivating from seed to table. She says that, well, her broccoli is, is healthy, but all of the others are looking pretty weak. I did not germinate my seeds using your plate method since I hadn't seen your videos. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but we'll do this going forward. You don't necessarily have to use my, my method. I just feel that that method is one of the easiest to ensure success for beginners because it's it's going to make sure that the seeds that you plant germinate and you actually are only planting into the soil seeds that are germinated and also because you're you're germinating them in a sterile environment that is makes it more likely that they will not have fungal diseases to begin with right in the first week or two so that's why I advocate the plate method but it is more time consuming I don't think it works for everyone and definitely if it doesn't work for you, you don't have to do it. I just think that some seeds, some plants, especially like tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and those those kinds of um, warm season plants, they really benefit from this method. But and also when you have seed that's that you bought a, a packet and you want to stretch that to the max and you don't want to you want to be cheap basically and use the last up to the last seed, you, you definitely want to use this method because it will you'll almost get 90 to 100 percent germination if you have new seed and she says that she will be using will try to use this method going forward and I want to know how that goes for you I have saved our toilet paper and paper towel rolls to use as seedling pots do you think this will give my plants enough room to bulk up actually it's fine I, I know that people do it but I don't advise it I think it's small I think it creates mold it has a tendency to create mold so while a part of me is really enthusiastic about using recycled materials and as much as I hate plastic I advise my advice is to use the, the plastic um, cups especially if you're beginning and transparent ones are even better because they allow light to get up to the ceiling now hopefully you can use something else. Um, I know that people use soil blockers. I haven't tried yet, and that probably is the reason. That's the one thing that I need to do is to to find, to to be able to sow seeds in soil blocks, because that would solve the issue with the plastic. 
I, I don't like to, to use single-use plastics, and that's why I've, I've been reusing my garden cups for several seasons already. But I know they're going to break and they get brittle with time. So eventually I have to change them, but, you know. They work. For now, I say it's good to begin with, perhaps. But if you have a better solution that does not include using plastic, I'm all for that. And she continues, how close to my seedlings am I supposed to set my lights? And how do I know when to move my lights up? This is something a lot of people ask. Um, I would say put it as close as you think and then put it a little closer. If you're using, and you should be using, fluorescent lights or perhaps LEDs, but do not use incandescent. And I, I think the longer tubes are the better option. Since you're using that, you can basically touch the the seedling to to the light although ideally you want to leave about an inch or two so the closest you get your lights to the seedlings the the better the less leggy they will be and a, a seedling that's not leggy is a seedling that will succeed remember that when do you know when to um, raise your lights as soon as they touch the light that's when you know you raise it a little bit more and that that will work for you. I'm I'm sure that if you try this, you'll see how much better your seedlings will come out. And if you can actually place your shelf or whatever you're using to to hold your your seedling trays and your light next to a sunny south-facing window, that supplemental light just gives it I think a boost in the amount of light that it gets. That just ensures better seedlings. I learned this the hard way. This is something I, from years of trying before I came to understand that yes, I needed to raise them next to the window and with artificial sunlight if I wanted the best, fastest growing, sturdiest seedlings out there. I'm also unsure if I'm watering too much or too little. I have been careful not to water in a rough manner using a spray bottle or bottom watering, but I am never sure how wet or too wet how wet is too wet or how often is too often this is something you pick up as you continue gardening you want to water as little as possible that means overwatering is worse than underwatering however don't let your plants dry if they start to wilt that's already that's already a little too late but you still can can revive them I wouldn't advise you doing that all the time. If it's it's okay if it happens once, but it shouldn't be happening all the time. Otherwise, you won't have you'll have stress ceilings, and you do not want stress ceilings. They're more prone to disease, and you know they're crazy ceilings. So don't don't do that. As for the way you water, yes, it's good to use gen a gentle stream, and I've shown the the water bottle with the the top pricked with a thumbnail as your your means of watering really tiny seed seedlings but as soon as they get to two or three pairs of leaves they're already strong enough to take in a more vigorous watering um, sure watering from the bottom is good I don't necessarily think it has to be that way you can water from the top because in nature that's where rain comes from so that's fine this year I'm planting broccoli, spinach, kale, rainbow chard, arugula, celery, garlic, onions, two varieties of cucumbers, three varieties of tomatoes, sweet peppers, peas, beans, zucchini, potatoes, and several types of herbs. Definitely you got bit by the gardening bug and I completely, completely relate to that. <laughs> Thanks for your time and help. And I really hope your garden produces well. Remember gardening is a trial and error. Trial and error, yeah, sure. Anyways. Uh, you will learn as you kill plants. That's how you get experienced. So a green thumb, I, I heard the sayings that a green thumb is not a, a thumb that necessarily has always saved plants. It's one that has killed many and knows. So you'll, you'll succeed, I know. You, you've been bit by the bug and now it's just gonna flower and grow. Anyways, if you have a question, thanks for the question, Sarah. And if you have a question, send it to seedofchoice at gmail.com. And hopefully I can sort of answer it. I don't know. Just send it in. Thank you.